Hi everyone. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to prepare journal entries after a bank reconciliation has been prepared for a company. A bank reconciliation just means that you're bringing two sets of records into agreement. The company's records on the cash account and then the bank's records. We're going to make some adjusting entries uh, to a, come to an adjusted balance. And the reason this happens typically is due to timing differences. For instance, deposits, most banks will um, stop at, say, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and they'll begin the next day at that point for their records. Well, for us, with a company, perhaps the end of the day will be um, 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock whenever we go home. So typically, the numbers are going to be different due to timing differences. Also, companies write checks, mail checks, but they we go ahead and record that in our books, but they haven't really cleared the bank yet. So uh, those are called outstanding checks when that happens. So again, timing differences are typically the only entries that we need to um, that we need to be concerned with. Here you have an account that's already been reconciled and I encourage you to learn how to reconcile your bank statement. You can do this with your personal statement for good practice. Typically at the end of the statement that does come to you in the mail there is a form that you can use to help you do this. You list those checks that are still outstanding. That means they have not cleared the bank yet but you know you've written the check and they're going to be clearing the bank so you need to record that list in your um, on your reconciliation sheet. There are many available out online if your bank does not provide one, but do get in the habit, just follow the instructions on the sheet to reconcile your statement. Because again, in this video, we're just going to be preparing the journal entries on the company's side of the records. Notice that uh, it's vital to be able to reconcile this bank statement because when you do go to work for a company, it's going to be assumed that you know how to do this. So practice on your own statements. This is a wonderful internal control measure that companies use to help guard and protect the cash. Okay, so what you have here is the bank reconciliation for Weber products. So we have the cash balance according to the bank statement. This is not the depositor or the company's records. This is the bank's statement. We are going to add deposits in transit. So these are deposits that have been recorded by the company. They've probably been taken to the bank, but they've not cleared the bank yet. So not recorded by the bank yet. Subtotal. And then you have outstanding checks. The outstanding checks are those checks the company has written, but they have not cleared the bank yet. But they're expected to. This, when subtracted, gets us to the adjusted balance. We cannot make any adjusting entries for the bank. If there is a problem with the bank's numbers, if we find an obvious error, we've received a deposit that truly should be somebody else's, or they've deducted a check maybe a second, two times, I have had that happen before, then what can you do about it? All you can do is call your bank about it. They have to make the adjusting entries. Nothing that you on, do on paper here is going to change the bank's balances. You're going to have to call them or go down and see them to get that problem taken care of. So now we want to focus on the company's records. So this is the company or depositor's records. So based on the cash balance that we have in the cash account, um, you see this balance of $2,895.82. And then these are adjustments that the bank has already made to our account. So they collected a note, and this is not uncommon for uh, customers to pay directly into your account sometimes, maybe an online pay or something like that. So here they collected the customer amount, $500. We have not recorded this yet, but the bank has. That's an increase to the account. Interest also collected on a customer's account, $65.45 collected for us. Put, I'm saying us, but I mean the company. So that's been deposited into the account. And now look at the next item. So this one might seem a little um, unusual, but this does happen sometimes. So this is a recording error. This means that we wrote the check number 498 and we used it to pay on account. So we used it to pay on an account's payable. It was actually written for $417.25 which is we can assume that's the amount that was actually owed. 
but we recorded it at $471.25. So the difference between those is $54. So we wrote it for $417.25. We recorded it in our books at $471. We just transposed those numbers. $471.25, the difference, $54. So this $54 never left the account. It is still in the account, so we need to make the entry to adjust our record so that this matches. Adding that back gives us our subtotal, and then we have a customer's check that bounced on us, so there was not sufficient funds in that customer's account to cover the check, so it bounced. Now, this doesn't mean the customer doesn't owe us anymore. It just means that money has been removed from our account to cover it. So now we're going to have to get on the phone or send a letter or something to that customer to try to receive payment from them for this amount. Also, you see a deduction for a bank service charge of $20. Notice all the deductions are in parentheses. That's pretty common for us in accounting. So we're going to subtract that bank service charge of $20 and then our amount, the adjusted balance now is reconciled or it matches the bank's adjusted balance so that when everything is brought up to um, up to speed, all the deposits, all the checks cleared, all these charges they've removed from the account and added to the account, then this would be our adjusted balance. So this this side is what we are concerned with trying to prepare the journal entries on. Let me pull those up. Continuing on, so you notice over on the far right hand side here I've got the 471 that was recorded, actually written for the 417, so the difference here $54 too much. Now let's prepare those journal entries. And so you see them right beside the entry, so let's look at them one at a time. Okay, so first the bank collected a note receivable for us. That's how it's described here. So that's what we're going to call it as well. So that means cash was debited. It increased the amount of cash in the account. So we debit cash for the $500. And then we will credit note receivable. This is the customer that owed us the $500. So we're going to give credit to their account. Let me also draw your attention to the dating here. So the bank statement is dated on the 20th. Many banks will send it to you at the end of the month if you'd like. And for a business, it's often better to do that. But just to let you know, it can happen any time um, through the month. Okay, next, the interest on the note receivable works in much the same way. Cash has increased, so we're going to debit cash, sixty-five forty-five. However, now we're going to call that interest. We didn't have an interest receivable. If we had, uh, we would credit that account. But in this case, we're going to recognize interest revenue. Next, we're going to correct this recording error that we had of the $54. Remember, we said that we wrote it for uh, recorded it for too much. The check was actually written for 417, so we need to put this amount, make an adjusting entry, if you will, and put this back into the account. So the cash account should actually be increased for the $54, and then that account's payable. When we made the recording, we would have given um, a debit to accounts payable for that 471, so we need to reverse that part of that as well, the $54. We do that by crediting the accounts payable account. The next entry is for this insufficient funds check. Not sufficient funds is the NSF there, $262.22. So the customer owes us this money. So this means we need to debit the accounts receivable account, credit cash. This is a reduction in cash. So we need to deduct this or make sure that we credit cash so that it shows to be a decrease in cash. Next, we have the bank service charge, and I just put bank fee expense. You might call it office expense, uh, any number of things a company might call it. This is an expense. This is also a decrease in the cash amount, and so you'll want to debit the expense account, which increases it, and credit the cash account, which is going to decrease the cash amount. This concludes your journal entries for this particular reconciliation account. There could be others, but this gives you a pretty good look at some of the different types of adjusting entries you will need to make on the company side of the books. Remember, you cannot adjust the bank's side of the books. You can only adjust for the company.